good evening uh, the ones who have already arrived apparently they have a bit of uh, numbers are trickling in although we are a bit late i think we'll just go ahead and continue with our today's uh, event we were waiting for others to join us and to give us uh, whether to go ahead and what to do uh, but today i think let us just go ahead with what we wanted to do today uh, and probably it will be okay if we all take it the way we had planned uh, perfect let me take you through what we had planned for today and uh, I hope the sound is clear. If it's not clear, kindly make use of the question and uh, I mean Q and A section to be able to show uh, your concern and always keep us updated on what is happening. If you're not getting us, kindly let us know what is happening on your side. I'm not able to find out clearly uh, what you are getting, so kindly let us know through the Q and A and even the chat session in case you are interested in chatting directly uh, to us. Uh, perfect. I think we need to go on and today we will be talking about, we're taking you to the, um, again, the, another event for Arduino and this is lesson four, the fourth event, uh, the fourth lesson uh, for uh, Arduino and we are going a bit step by step because we are hoping that people have uh, done a lot and today we want to really look at uh, what we are talking about generally on the inputs and the outputs. In Arduino, of course, we, we talked about the board receiving inputs, and then the same same board is able to, uh, some of the pins to become outputs. Some pins can become inputs so that they receive signals, and some pins become output as they output some signals, or they actually uh, render the action that is required. So in most cases, it's required, and therefore you'll find that an Arduino is busy uh, right, analyzing that information that's getting in, interpreting it, and then moving it out so that something happens. In fact, it is when things happen, that's when we can be able to say that Arduino is having something or our program is working or our project is now delivering some bit of an outcome or an expected uh, outcome in that particular session. So kindly, uh, I hope this one becomes the next uh, big space that we can be talking about. Great. I think uh, now, of course, we talked about, last week we talked about sensors and actuators. We just introduced, we took you through so that you see some of the sensors that come with the Arduino kit. Today, we want to go a bit, a little bit deeper and touch on the sensors. Probably if we get time, we'll be able to do a bit of coding. But if not, it's usually very, very, prudent that we understand the sensor itself. What does it do? What are they? So when we talk about sensors and actuators with Arduino, sensors are definitely the input. Remember, we talked about inputs and output signals. So the sensors are those uh, gadgets or modules that are responsible for acquiring or be able to capturing some signals or data that is taken into Arduino and then this data is analyzed or interpreted or used for the sake of doing an action and whatever takes out to go and do that action is now what we're calling the actuators. This one would be uh, things like the motion, uh, probably the we talked about the the trans maybe for the movement we, we need things like uh, I think we, we talked about at some some other modules. Uh, I think the drivers for uh, the, rot the rotational, uh, the fits to rotate and stuff like that. I think we'll be talking about that. The motors and all that. These are the actuators, the ones that are doing something. Ones uh, probably uh, you have already gotten the sensor. Probably you are sensing maybe it is hot. What should I do? I move away. Definitely the motor will take that signal and translate it and put it into movement. Now that is what is called the actuator. The sensors and the actuators. The sensors are specifically for the sake of capturing the data. Then the actuators are the ones that take uh, that data and put it into action. And a very good example of a sensor here, we're talking about sound sensor. We're talking about uh, micro, uh, probably temperature sensor. We talked about things to do with the IR sensor. And we are going to show you quite just even one or two so that we move through. I'll talk, I'll just take you through and then we'll see. 
And then the actuators, uh, things like the motor, and we had several motors, remember last week, we talked about the different kind of motors that are available and how we can be able to use them. Great. I think maybe it is good to now start with this kind of a simple uh, uh, diagram that shows you how particularly we are going to connect. This is also part of our next activity. How do we connect the different uh, modules or different things we have or different parts of Arduino? How do we make them connected so that things start happening? I think for this, we're just showing a little bit of an output based on the uh, LED, the red LED that we have there. But this is just, this is just how uh, first I want you to know that very soon we'll be doing all that ourselves. How do we show a connection? How do we show some sort of uh, a way how the, the wires and the connection and the way the algorithms will take place so that at least whatever thing we are planning to happen, it will happen using the, the various uh, uh, ways that we are. We, I think there's this are just diagramic or graphical representation of some of the projects that will be running very soon. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm begging so that at least we can, I can take you back a bit, just a bit, so that uh, before we come back to this particular uh, space we have been talking about. And I wanted to start with this. Let's talk briefly about the sensors that we have uh, here, especially in the, these ones are the basic ones that come with the, the, uh, the kit, the basic kit, the standard Arduino kit. And one of them that is very, very uh, obvious is the ultrasound distance sensor. It's called ultrasound distance sensor because as we are going to look at it, when do we use this? Because that's also some of the questions that uh, you keep asking, when do I use this kind of sensor and how does it work? So I think maybe it's only good to first of all learn how it works, then before thinking about how you use it so that you only use what you understand well. So this is how it looks like. And I think maybe in the video, we can always look at how it looks like. Uh, I'll be showing you how it looks like, a real one uh, on our table here so that you are able to be able to see that it is something that is, is doable and you can be able to uh, to see it from here. Great. Great. So probably yeah, we will be able to, to show that briefly how it is working and, and what we do. But otherwise, this is basically what we're talking about the infra uh, ultrasound distance. So how does ultrasound distance work? The sensor, distance sensor. sensor. And so this is how basically it is. The, the, it has two parts, the T and the R. So even if you have, uh, if you look at it uh, generally, you'll see that uh, probably let me, let me work on the camera because the camera is not uh, working uh so for the audio i think we're okay and then for the camera the microphone uh microphone also i think yes the microphone is okay we'll use that and then for the camera let us use this so that at least i show you some of the things we're seeing on the ground here uh, So we are talking about ultrasound, and uh, this is how an ultrasound looks like. I want you to see it from the camera here. This is how an ultrasound looks like. And you can see it is just, uh, it is just a small uh, thing that like, looks, uh, probably you can see our, something like a, a robot that is uh, actually moving and in front of it you can be able to see these two eyes these two eyes they look like an eye this is the sensor we're talking about it's called ultrasound sensor and the ultrasound sensor is what we're going to talk about what actually it does it, it has two parts the t 
and they are. Maybe you are not able to see that uh, from that picture because it is not big enough. Uh, but I'm going to look for probably uh, maybe something closer. This is it. And if you look at it, it has two eyes. One side is written probably basically you may not be able to see this. Uh, but if you look closely, one of the eyes is not is written as T and the other one is is having the, the letter R uh, on it. So it means something. These two uh, small things that look like eyes. This kind of sensor is what we are calling the ultrasound sensor. So why is it having two parts? One written R and the other part written T. That is what we want to look at. Uh, maybe I can stop the video so that uh, we, we use uh, the other the other whatever. So uh, just let us send that. Let us continue so that you're able to see the different parts. So one part is T and the other part is written R in the ultrasound uh, sensor. And the T here is to, for transmitting and R is for receiving. Remember, it's about transmission and receiving. So how does this sensor work? What is the role of the sensor and what actually it does? And in which kind of project can we be able to use this sensor effectively? That's why we wanted today we talk about the sensors specifically. Because it's a possibility, you may want to do a project where an ultrasound sensor is required. So how does it work? That is what we want you to see today. So the ultrasound sensor, works this way. Okay, I think maybe I'll just show you one. It throws, it sends, it transmits with a T. The I, the other, the second I, which is the T. I and mean, then you can find that part of the guard, just part of the, the, it looks like an eye of a cat. The first time I started looking at the sensor, I would say, uh, this eye of a cat, uh, or the eye of the robot. Uh, sometimes you may mistake it to mean the eye of the robot, but actually, what we're talking about those particular parts, one is, is, is a transmitting eye, let me use the word eye locally for the people to be able to understand, and the other one is the R for receiving. So what the, what is this that it transmits and receives? And we say it transmits some signals. It just transmits random, random signal to target uh, some kind of uh, probably let me say this is, uh, let me put a pen and then I show you. So these are the signals being transmitted. So it transmits them just randomly. As they go out there and you can see the way, the waves as they go until they meet, uh, this is an obstacle. Maybe it is some kind of thing stopping it. So once it knows there's an obstacle on the way, definitely it now, what happens when they get these waves get to the obstacle? They are reflected back. Remember, they were all moving towards this side, and then all of a sudden, now again, they are supposed to be going back. As they go back, the amount of time they take to reach back to this particular, because remember, this is the one, uh, the T is the one that transmits, it's like the one that lets out those waves. And then the R receives, receives the the echo is like the echo of that wave. The wave has been thrown, then it reaches the obstacle and then it, it bounces back. As it bounces back, that is what we are talking about. The receiver now here receives those waves or the signal and is able to calculate to know the distance between this particular object and the obstacle, which is here, the obstacle we talked about, the obstacle here. So that is how the, or the optical, um, I mean, the, 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 the sensor work, uh, this sensor of, um, uh, we've talked about being two eyes or stuff like that, work exactly like that. And uh, let us go a little bit further and see, actually probably you may not be able to see, but so what I'm talking about is that the, we want to see the same waves coming back. So you can see the receiver, there's a microphone, the R, uh, getting the point. The T is the transmitter. 
and it now is like it acts like the loudspeaker. It's the one that really releases the waves or the sound. It's, it has a transmitter. It's, it's more of it is more of a loudspeaker, and you can see it here. And, and then the receiver, which is the microphone, uh, because as this one moves, because the sound goes direct and reaches at a particular angle, reaching the obstacle. So this is the obstacle. Maybe it's the wall. Maybe it's a human being standing on the way. Maybe it's a roadblock or stuff like that. Think about all of your project and see which one works in this particular area and how do we use them. And then once the sound, as you can see, the sound is once it is released, it travels again along the, as, as you see, this, these cables are able to, do, to show you. So this, the loudspeaker sends it. Once it reaches the obstacle here, now it doesn't again move. This is like an obstacle. It can be a wall or something that really cannot allow the sound to move. So instead, it goes back. So once it goes back, it's reflected back. It echoes back and it's received by the microphone, which is now the R. Remember, we talked about the T and the R. These are areas you can look at that particular thing and you'll see the written T and R. And, and I think maybe this is very elaborate so that you can understand that uh, that is how whatever thing you have ever seen like this, this kind of uh, sensor works to determine, to be able to detect the distance uh, before or rather the proximity of an object, an object from the other. So we can say this is 10 meters away, 15 meters away, 30 meters away. And, and actually, this particular sensor is able to detect up to around 30 uh, meters away. And how do we know the difference, the distance? You calculate the distance based on the time delay. As the, the transmitter transmits the, la the, the loud, or the sound, or whatever, then the receiver picks that. Now, the time between the time when the receiver, or rather the echo, is reaching back to the receiver, it's actually reaching the receiver. That time delay is what is calculated into the distance. Maybe that one is, again, another thing we can be talking about. But generally, I think we are very much on the same. When, when we get this, this sensor, this is how we can connect it. And you can see in many, many, many uh, aspects that uh, there is something I want to this is how we connect it to the board. This is, of course, uh, there's no doubt about how uh, what, uh, the Arduino, of course, the Arduino board is here. So the question can be how we connect it to the Arduino. And I think that's why this diagram is very, very important. You can see that this is the sensor we are talking about. And the T, uh, we talked about the T that transmits the, the sound. And we talked about the R. The other side is actually the R that receives the echoes that bounces back uh, to the sensor. So as it receives, then we are able to identify the distance between the object and the sensor, uh, whatever the obstacle it is. And this, this is how we connect it. And I think you can see that, uh, I want you to know that the sensor has four terminals or four, four pins, that one is written ground. And all this, you can find the information basically on the on the, the 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 sensor itself, the sound sensor itself. So you can see the um, it says ground, the G and D. You'll find that other one is that the pin is for ground, the pin for echo. This is a pin that really has is very important because it's the one we want to find out what is it doing uh, in most cases, and that's why we're putting it to pin 13. And then we have pin. Uh, the timing uh, that is called triggering, the triggering pin. Uh, the triggering, that's the one that, like the microphone, that's the one that sends the signal. It's called the trigger, TRG. You can see there, TRG. And then we have the power, the VCC, V uh, is V, maybe voltage uh, in. So that one we love to put into the, the, the voltage, which is like the power, 5 volt. And then we connect the triggering to any of the pin. I think the triggering, in this particular sense, it has been connected to the eighth pin. And then 
the echo is connected to the to tar, pin number 13. And then there's ground, which is all, again also connected to the ground. So you can see that all of this, this is actually what, how we connect the, the, this kind of sensor to the, to the Arduino for us to start using it. Remember, we talked about it measuring the, the we talked about it measuring specifically the distance, the distance between an object to the whatever it is. Probably, um, maybe, I don't know whether, you can take time, look around, and uh, maybe can I give like two minutes so that we, we, we try to find questions that are around this, in case somebody has a question around this particular sensor, so that if we go from here, we can now connect and look at what actually happens once it's connected, how do we use it and, and stuff like, uh, like that. So I think maybe uh, this is very key. Let me just give a break, a short break, to find out uh, from the colleague because it is like uh, 30 minutes, so definitely this need to for a break. And I want you to ask questions before we go to the next sensor, which I'll also explain. Probably today we may not be able to do the coding itself, but it's good to understand the sensors very, very well.
Welcome back. Apparently there are no questions. Probably people are listening or they have missed to come on board. Whatever happens, I think we are uh, we are there. We will be uh, with you all through. Great. I think maybe now we want to. I think we were talking about this uh, the ultrasound ultrasound distance sensor. It sends. Uh, as we've, say, we've seen, it sends the sounds, it transmits the sound, and then again waits for the echo. Once the echo comes back, then it calculates the delay that it takes, how long it takes for the, the echo to sound to come back using the other, the other, uh, the other, whatever, the other sensor, the other terminal written R, it receives that echo. And then that calculation is now taken that how long does it take for it to reach, uh, for the sound to come back. Once we know how the sound is coming back, definitely we'll now be able to get the distance. So that's why we, we call it ultrasound distance sensor. I think maybe now this sensor is, is, is understood. It has four pins. One pin goes to the voltage, as we have seen there. Uh, and then we have another pin for triggering, thank you, Maxwell. I can see you are there. What's the code? Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll be giving you the code. Uh, and for what, particularly, again, the question would be, at particular, this particular level, we're just showing you how to connect the sensors, and then we'll now put you through how to do with it. Of course, I'll be giving you the code. Don't worry about that. And then, of course, the echo. This is now when we are talking about uh, waiting for it to come back and then the ground as usual just for the sake of uh, the, 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 the whatever so thank you so much uh, for that let me just take you uh, to part of the code uh, as, as maxwell has asked uh, what about the code so uh, maybe we may, we may not be able to do a whole coding because that one would mean uh, we want to have this to this this particular sensor and also take you through another sensor so that when we now sit down to code we'll be talking uh, something like this uh, so one you see we will define and say the the triggering uh, the trigger pin and then the echo pin remember we have the t and the r so that the trigger pin remember we talked about the trigger pin which is the t here this is the one which we have connected to pin number 10 and then the echo pin which is this one here uh, we have connected it to pin number 13, if you're able to see. So when we go to the code, it actually shows what we're talking about. So we are telling it, like, look, we are saying there is pin 10 and pin 13. All these all this ones have been connected. And because the distance can be, we have this, uh, we'll be taking you through the software and giving you the variable types. So this is, we are declaring a variable of float because the distance cannot be one, two, three, four. Probably the distance is 1.2.0 or 3.5 kilometers, 3.5 centimeters. All those points, because it is not definitely an, 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 uh, a whole number, so it's not an integer. So definitely that's why we're saying you have to declare the duration and make sure the variable for the, 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 the duration or rather and the distance can only be float duration because it can take 5.1 seconds, 6 seconds for the echo to come back. So once the ultrasound releases the sound and then it gets to the obstacle, it comes back uh, as, as a sound back and then it's it is received. And remember when it's received, then then we are able to de determine whether what the, the distance is all about. And then we, we at, the, at the setup, we we'll want to see, don't worry about this because this, is, can, this one can only help you to read so that you're able to see things from within. And it's very important, of course, because you want to read what is really happening um, in terms of numbers before you work out and decide whichever number that appears, what you need to do with it. So trigger pin is an output and echo pin is an input. Remember trigger pin because we are sending the sound out of the, the ultrasound distance uh, uh, sensor. And the echo pin is because we are receiving that's why it's, we are declaring it as an input because we are receiving the sound back. Uh, so and I think this is just setting up. That's how these are the most uh, important. Uh, the code you need to really look at that. And of course, the serial display, 
is what we are saying. We want this to use just to display within. Maybe we are not at this particular level, we are not going to use much of it. Then, of course, all this will be teaching you when you are getting the Arduino software, which we have not really gotten there. We thought just going straight to the sensors would be good uh, so that you understand the sensors. And then, of course, when we now start writing, so initially we, we, we are thinking that the triggering is low and then we give it uh, two seconds to delay. Then we send. By putting high, it means we are sending now a signal. So that pin of triggering triggers the sound and then gives delays again wait and then switches off. So the only thing we want to do is all the time the pin keeps sending and wait for two seconds and send and st top sending again sending. So all this will be repeated uh, time and again. So as it keeps sending, then we start listening. So these are the, and we want to hear the duration where the echo pin will be listening as it keeps speaking and then look at the distance. Therefore, it's called duration divided by two times 0 0.3. Uh, this this kind of 343 meters per second as speed. We know the speed of sound being there, 300 meters per second. So we want to know the distance. We calculate the distance by getting the duration that takes. Uh, of course, the echo in coming back, uh, divide it by two so that we're able to get that. So I think maybe all this will come in good time. So good. I think if there is no question, uh, let me imagine that this kind of uh, the, the, the code, it may not help you as per now because it is just showing you what actually takes place within that sensor we called, uh, we talked about, which is the ultrasound uh, distance sensor. Moving fast, let us take, I just wanted maybe to take this uh, webinar to talk about just two sensors. We may not be able to cover so many sensors, but two sensors. So the next sensor, which again, very important you may want to use is called the PIR sensor. In most cases, the common language you're talking about movement sensor, it is able to get the movement. And you can imagine the way the movement in the room Probably you want a project where you are taking care so that the thieves don't come in the room. When they get in the room, you're able to trigger the alarm and you're using only the, the movement sensor uh, here. And, and on my table, I think I have the movement sensor. They are of two types. I mean, they are on, it's only one type, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll be showing you the, 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 the picture of them as well as keeping on to talk to you about it. So it's dome shaped. You always see it is dome shaped. It consists of several uh, lenses. These are lenses. You can see these are small lenses, so that whatever light which is being beamed, these are lenses. It can disperse it, so that they come to be so many tune, tiny, 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 tiny infrared, tiny, tiny. That's why we call it IR infrared. So like tiny, tiny uh, infrared. They are moving out. So this cover, this this just but a cover that that has lenses so that whatever uh, whatever light is being thrown this one now throws it into different direction because they are small small lenses i'm just the one drawing this i uh, don't think it's drawn like that on it so let us see what how that how it looks like probably uh more so that on the table you can see this cover here this is the cover which we have just removed this is the cover that has lenses but the the real thing but beneath is it's just one single uh, beam that comes out the infrared is beamed from just one single source. But when it reaches the cover, it is dispersed into several, probably millions of, 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 of uh, the, red, the infrared so that it, it, it becomes dispersed all over probably the room and is able to pick up to almost five to even six meters away. So you're able to pick uh, whatever movement is taking place around that. And then you can see this, uh, it is placed, the sensor is placed on a board, small board that has different things. Uh, it has a jumper. And then, of course, it has some little potentiometers uh, that you keep adjusting, maybe for sensitivity. And then probably that other one tells you how much do you need of the distance around it. Then there are several probably capacitors and stuff like other modules attached to it, small, small ones, just to make a complete uh, movement sensor for it to become a sensor. 
because on its own it can still work because it has it's supposed to capture it has to raise the sensitivity and then move the next level so when you get it like this kindly don't think it it does just appear like this you can break it into pieces and that's why you have the cover and you have the underneath uh, uh whatever gadget itself so now let us look at many many more other things maybe let's get to 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 find the pins how do we connect when you want to connect of course there are the three pins all of it always have three pins those three pins are the ones you will want to use uh, as you connect it to the Arduino board. The pin, uh, there's one pin for ground. In the middle, they have the output, and then the voltage comes in the VCC, basically the voltage. This one is what you use, you take straight to the, the board as you connect it to either five volts, because five volts is okay uh, for it. Then the output, definitely we want to see uh maybe because it's already picking something so this is what you also connect to one of the pins as the output because arduino would want to to really get this it's like you're taking this data to the arduino using this pin so this is what you connect to any of the pins in the arduino especially the digital pin so that you use it or program it to do some things let us continue naming the parts i think that's what i want to to probably uh, show next the other parts that I wanted to, to see is the, the potentiometer I was talking about. One is basically adjusting the time. The other one adjusting the sensitivity. So that how sensitive do you want the, the movement sensor to be able to capture the movement? Do you want anything, even like a fly coming by, it can be able to pick. Sometimes you put it, even a rat passing in the room, it's able to detect some movement. But in most cases, it may not, it may not be able to pick the rat. Uh, so that is that's the aspect of sensitivity. How sensitive do you want it to really, uh, really work? That is the aspect here uh, we are talking about sensitivity. And then the time is, of course, it will keep checking, checking whether there's movement in the room. How often do you want it to keep checking? Because in most cases, it beams and then it again keeps time, keep checking the status. Or sometimes you can see there's movement. And then that movement moves away. So it checks and then it finds no movement. Therefore, it says there's no movement. But if it checks and only finds the movement and then stops at just saying there was movement, then even five minutes later, you can still think there's still movement, yet movement has not been there. So you have to really ensure the number of times you want it. So the quality of timing so that it keeps repeating, it keeps checking, especially keeps checking and checking whether there is uh, still movement in that particular space. Remember, it is movement sensor and it uses IR or infrared, which is beamed and it's, it moves out. So let us continue doing a bit of naming. Then we have the sensor. You can always see some sensors also put on board. Light sensor is also equipped with it. We know a light sensor can also come at a small gadget on its own. But the light sensor here is very important because sometimes you want this movement to work at night. So the light sensor will, will contribute, will help the movement sensor even operate during night hours or rather when there's no light so that uh, the movement sensor is able to work through all through. Or probably you just want it to work in the night and not on the day. So those ones are aspects of it that you really need to know. Then the no repeat and repeat, of course, we talked about that in terms of even when I was talking about the time. So how much should it repeat looking and sensing around and ensuring that there is actual movement in the room or there's no movement at all at all. It tries to check on the movement. If there's movement, it says, ah, there's movement. Goes back again to check whether there's movement again. Probably the movement has disappeared or the person has passed or it has stopped. In this case, it's very important, especially when you want to turn on and off lights in probably toilets or in the dormitory or in some places where you don't want people to be wasting light so you are you are tempted to turn on and off the light so when you turn on the lights when somebody has gotten into the bathroom as it's using the bathroom the lights are on because of the repeat or no repeat stuff so they, they keep on checking is the person still in yes the person is still in so keep the lights on, keep the lights on. So it keeps checking when the person has left the room, 
Now it keeps checking again, finds no, there's no person anymore. And therefore there's no movement. There's no movement anymore or there's no motion inside the room. And therefore what should we do? We should now switch off the light. So it switches off the light because it keeps checking whether there's person. But otherwise, if you just put it on and then there is nothing, it does not repeat, it will only switch on and wait for the time is told. Maybe switch on this for five seconds. So after five seconds, the light will go off. So you can find yourself inside the bathroom. You're using the bathroom, but the lights have gone off. It's not that there is power fluctuation or whatever. It's the sensor switched off the fan power because it was not put at, probably it was set to no repeat. Uh, and where you needed a repeat. So depending on your project, you will want to ask yourself whether you need it to repeat or you need it to just no, no repeat. Because for example, in, in the place of alarm or of, of a thief, definitely you just need a no repeat. Let it just make noise once. And then it, that one, it's enough to alert the police to come over to be able to, uh, to do or, or to alert the neighborhood. But imagine a situation where you are, it, is, it keeps on making noise and noise and noise probably the whole day. And even when the police people, people are coming in, it keeps making noise. So at that particular level, definitely, it is now not giving you the result that you needed. That's where the repeat and no repeat work. So again, I want to say this one is basically dependent on your project. What do you want to do? What do you want to come up with? And I think may, that is very important to know to not and uh, maybe we, we can go straight and try now to connect it to the Arduino board and see how do we connect it. As I've said, the output, this is the one that will be sending uh, the, the signal of whether there's movement or no movement to the board. I was trying to create a simple project here, just a very simple one, where we want to see whether it, if it's detected, this, this LED will light up. But this one shows that it, the detection is ready. The, uh, the infrared are already been dispersed in the room. And then this one will wait after probably triggering the movement. It waits again maybe for some time. That's how it may be using that we know, uh, maybe using the LED may not really give you the real picture on how motion sensor works. But I think for me, uh, just because I wanted to detect how it's working, how it's work, and doing some stuff, this would be a, a very equivalent thing. So start imagining where do you think you can use this kind of sensor in your project? What will it be sensoring or sensing the movement at what particular level? And, and you can see the way connecting it to the Arduino is so, so simple. One, just remember the VCC, which is usually the, the one that takes the voltage. It's connected to five volts. Remember it can pick to, remember there's something I want you, uh, let me take you back. Uh, to, to this and then you can be able to see. Uh, I talked about this VCC, remember here, and talked about the VCC, uh, probably uh, you can see down here, this is what I'm talking about. Look at the kind of power it can be able to receive. Remember this is so powerful. It may not, it can even use 20 volts, which is, which is big enough. It means, therefore, it's, that's why it is used in, in, even in the toilets and stuff like that, because it can pick big, big, big power. So you don't need really, of course, in your project, kindly don't go to real electricity because it may not really be safe for you. But this one is a strong sensor, tells you it can be used in a real world project. You don't need to say, I'm just going to try something or rather to prototype, but you can come up with a project that is working. We have seen in many schools where you go to toilets and probably uh, the boarding sections, they are all they are all now using movement sensors. And you can now, even you in your project, don't fear using the sensor in a real world project because it can take um, quite a, a lot of power. Although in our case here, we've just uh, managed to use it. We have connected it to five volts instead of uh, connecting it to uh, probably a bigger, uh, bigger voltage. But just to tell you that it can pick then ground, of course, goes to ground. So you see, already the connection is very simple that you can be able just to connect. Anybody can connect this to the Arduino. Then the next would just be, again, as, as, as Malibu Maxwell has just noted, is about the coding. So the coding again becomes your part. And I want you to see the 
LED, maybe we, we may be looking at the LED in the next level, because the LED has the leg, there's a leg which is short, the other leg is, is usually long, the leg, the, which is long is usually big. Like the positive is the one that really has to receive the, the one that's taken to put on the, on the, the pins. And remember it said all the pins are emitting uh, five volts. It's not very sure how, how big that can be, but LED cannot receive five, five volts. Five volts from the Arduino can automatically burn them or destroy them or short circuit them. Sometimes you may want to see whichever language you are getting. It depends on which subject. If you are a physics student, you can really give it a physical or technical term. If so for those students who are not checking uh, some of those technical subjects geared towards electricity, you can just say this one would destroy it. And that's why we need a resistor. So you can see we have, we have put a resistor to protect each and every LED. You may want to ask why, why this resistor along the way. So you see this, the power is coming like this and moving the red, the, look at the red LED, but somewhere along the line we have to put in the resistor just to protect it from burning because we know the power will be leaving, not coming from LED, but remember once this one has detected and takes the communication through pin 7 here, once the movement uh, sensor detects and brings in the communication that, hey, there's somebody in the room, take care. What happens is that uh, now in the process, the Arduino now sends by sending signals, and most of this goes in form of the voltage, it's like power, sending power. So if you are sending signals to this LED, it should not be able to burn the LED, and that's why in the middle, we are having resistors. I think maybe uh, this is something we, we will talk about in, in the other in the other section, where what is the work on the resistor and the ohms and all that. I think maybe we'll talk about this. We, are, we want to run away from theory as much as possible if we go to practical. But uh, because of time, uh, we wanted just today to take advantage, look at just four, two sensors. Maybe there are, there are other sensors, like even I'm having sound sensor here or microphone sensor, which uh, you can use by clapping and the lights go on, clapping and the light goes off. I think next time we'll be talking about, we'll now be coding just that light sensor. Maybe we'll just take one sensor. In our next program, we are taking only one sensor and doing a practical coding with it on the table here and ensuring uh, that it works as, as far what we are learning today about sensors are. Maybe the time is running and uh, we want to just take you to how the code may look like in, of, of in the sensor, or in the movement sensor, uh, maybe to detect and all these LEDs, those are now integers. Don't worry about the LEDs, which is one is put on. This one will light if there's movement detected in the room, pin 13 will be able to light. A ready LED is supposed to show us that it's now ready to detect. And then waiting, wait LED will be put like that. And the motion sensor is connected to pin seven. I think the PIR here is just the infrared, or rather the motion we are just trying to put. So once we have declared or defined how we have connected, remember this when we talk about defining, making definitions, sometimes we talk about variables. But what we are trying to say in this particular section, we are uh, declaring, we are already showing Arduino what to tell it what we are saying. First, we are saying we are going to use pin 13. We are also going to use pin 12. We are also going to use pin 11 to connect something like this. So it's like we are keeping some value here. Um, probably it is, it, is, it is very necessary, of course, uh, but if you don't understand again, we'll take you through this in the next uh, session. So, and I've said now in setting up, this becomes an output. I think all these things we will be able to talk about. So this is actually how the movement sensor, this is what it uses. And I put a delay of 60,000, like, like almost uh, several, almost six seconds to be able to get that working. After six seconds, it should be able to again detect movement in the room uh, and things like that, and then show us that it's ready. And then probably 
waiting can be turned off because the waiting wait wait for six seconds and then again do so it keeps repeating to detect to detect so as soon as it picks uh, that's where we are now coming to the last uh, where we're saying uh, okay get value from motion sensor of course and then it, then what does it do with the value i think maybe then triggering anything whether it's an alarm or something like that so maybe because of time i'll just rush and say uh probably that is how the connection will be naturally but all in all i think it is good uh for the day and mostly we have learned about two sensors today we've learned about the movement sensor or the motion sensor and the ultrasound sensor and how they work and probably how to connect them in the next in the next le lesson we will learn and not only learn we'll only take one sensor apparently uh, we are now seeing it is very hard to cover a sensor and then you fix it yourself on the, on the table here and then until it works within that particular time so definitely next time you're only going to take one sensor and that one will be i'm promising you it will be about the sound sensor and we'll now work on a project where you clap and the light turns on imagine you are inside a room and you're clapping and the lights are turning on and then you're clapping again and the lights are turning off so something like that that's what we want to work on we have different sensors here but we'll only pick one so that we work with in the, our next project otherwise i think i am i'm very very happy for today thank you so much keep asking questions the q a section is open for everybody kindly use it to ask questions thank you very much uh, for being with us today the videos of this the recording of this particular training will be taken will be downloaded and in fact we'll put on youtube and the link will be sent so that you keep you keep reading more about this because it's very important you learn more about this as you go on on your own thank you very much and thank you so much maxwell and team for listening and for being part of this and it doesn't matter we can always have a meeting of one to one with the team to be able to help them thank you so much god bless